guys, Dustin you here, and I'm going to show you guys everything that's new to Franchise Mode. Alright, so right off the bat, we're going to click New, Start a Franchise. So the next thing is to select your team, and uh, when you do that, you can also substitute a created team in. I know people have been asking me, you cannot substitute any... Uh, any other teams you can't do Europe or anything unless you created them and use their roster that's the only way to do it um, but for example I created the Seattle Metropolitans for my GM mode and I substitute them in for the Arizona Coyotes and there we go that's what we get we got the Seattle Coliseum age arena zero years shows your seating capacity all your player budget your top players everything the third screen is all of your menu options so instead of hiding them or not being hidden uh, they were kind of hidden before but now they've put them all up in front of you. Uh, so owner mode, on or off, that's all the new stuff. That's the budgets, revenue, relocation, owner modes, GM firing, promotions, and more. So you can just turn those off if you want to. If you do, it turns off GM firing, it turns off your relocation, and it turns off auto finances. Next up, you got your fantasy draft. If you want to do a fantasy draft, NHL salary cap as before, uh, GM firing. So if you want it on or off, you can turn it off. If you don't want to get fired, you can turn it off or on. doesn't really matter. I always play with it on. Uh, assistant coach edit lines, I always turn that off because it's really annoying. Uh, you got your waivers, you got your morale meetings. So like last year, I know people couldn't find it and people always were like, well, can you turn off morale? You can, but uh, this year it's right in the first screen. So if you want to turn it off, you can go, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to play with morale. Computer trays on or off, auto finances. So if you want to do owner mode and have all the things including relocation and firing, but you don't want to do finances or budget, you can turn that right on and uh, the computer does all that for you, you don't have to worry about it. Um, I, li I like the new depth of it, so it gives you a lot of new things to look at. Um, and then the relocation, accept relocation. So you can turn that on for your owner to always accept relocation, or you can turn it off so that you kind of have to work towards it. Some teams don't like to relocate, some teams might want to. Um, I also think it depends on how your team's actually doing as well, financially. All right, after that you go to continue to start your gym. And it'll give you a quick overview. Once again, in your rules and settings, you can go through and uh, there's all kinds of stuff. Gameplay sliders, advanced settings, quick settings. Uh, if I go to quick settings, it's got your gameplay presets. It's got your injuries. Uh, so injuries are in here. Uh, fantasy draft, you can still turn that on. I think you can pretty much turn on everything, though, if you want. For the most part, all your other options are in here. Your trade difficulty, uh, waivers, except relocation. So some of the other menu options from the first menu are in there as well. And then uh, advanced settings, you got your uh, coach edit lines, so you can turn that off. Uh, auto rotate goalies, which it actually works now. It really, it really does. Um, I made sure it works. <laughs> um, and then all your waiver stuff, and meeting notification, and morale. I always turn on. I don't. That's the one thing I don't understand is why the meeting is already always off. So make sure to turn on meeting notifications because if you're simulating and you have your morale on, make sure that it's on so that you get pop-ups. All right. Uh, next up, you're just going to jump in here. Gameplay sliders are basically all of your normal sliders. Keep salary cap on. All right, so here's the new franchise hub. So at first glance, it doesn't look like a whole lot of difference. You got your pre your simulation, your calendar, your stats central. You got all your stuff on the side here. You got your updates, which is kind of like your Twitter feed. Uh, Red Wings, so this is where you trade, improve, manage contracts, manage rosters. So this is all the same. However, if you look, we got an extra tab here now, and it's called owner. So if you go into the owner stuff, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. We'll get into that in a sec. And then in here, the league is where all your team strategies, edit player, league settings, and save file are. So from the main hub, you can hit it anywhere you want along these tabs. But if you look at the bottom of the screen, there's a bar that says ownership, miss, profit, uh, upgrade and maintain, fan happiness, and player morale. So this stuff was all kind of there before, except for the profit margin and the upgrade and maintain. If you hit R3 or your uh, right... Um, right analog stick button. It's going to bring up this brand new franchise overview menu, which is pretty good. It gives you quick access to everything that you actually need. So in the ownership miscellaneous, um, it shows you everything like your last game attendance, your team prestige to the area, your market size, your fan base, your national fan base, your annual revenue, season ticket revenue, all that kind of stuff. Um, as I scroll through it though, you can also see that different things pop up. So go to operations budget, so if we want to do that we can. Um, but basically these take you to all the menus in the owner uh, in the owner tile. So you got gross annual revenue, this says go to operations budget, and then season tickets and stuff, it says go to set prices. So any of these buttons will take you right to the owner tile, and it's just a much quicker way to access anything that you need to access. 
The next tab is the upgrades and maintain. So this has to do with how your, uh, basically how your arena is running. It gives you all your, uh, I guess, durability. Um, so the lower your durability on your stuff, the less likely it is that fans are going to use it. Um, this one's already highlighted, which is nice. Um, so this is bathroom maintenance. So you can see it's 56 out of 100. We got an exclamation mark there. Um, it also shows you on the main tile the red circle with the one in it. It shows you how many different uh, problems you have. And uh, the cool thing about these is it actually tells you uh, what the requirements for it are and the impact. So for requirements, this is dollar assigned to the operation budget. The more devoted the fan base, the better they care for your locations. Um, so if your fans don't care about you, they won't really care if your bathroom sucks. Um, but since we have a pretty hardcore uh, fan base, it's going to matter. The impacts, wear and tear on the location due to usage by customers, which makes sense as a bathroom, and then revenue profit from concession sales. So if you don't upgrade your bathrooms, it's going to impact your revenue and your profit from your concession sales because your people aren't going to want to use your bathrooms. Therefore, they're not going to actually purchase any concessions so they don't have to use your bathrooms. So if we wanted to update this, for example, we would click the X button because it's got a quick button and it takes you right to the tile where you need to be. So this would be your upgrade and maintain. Um, and then if you scroll all the way over, you can see your bathrooms right here, 56 of 100. When you go into one of them, there are upgrades on the bottom here, which mine is grayed out because I can't upgrade it because of the arenas. Um, but this one says re perform repair on bathrooms. So if I want to get it up to 100, you can see it says time required six days and that's the cost, $0.265 million. So if I click on that and purchase, now you're going to see that there's a little bar there that says repair in progress, days remaining six days. So it's going to take six days to repair our bathrooms. They're going to be 100 out of 100 and our fans are going to be happy with them again. Next up on the tile is your fan happiness. So obviously it says right there season ticket happiness, uh, game day ticket happiness, concessions, team store happiness, parking facilities, arena bathrooms, uh, everything. Everything's all in here. It kind of gives you the same thing that this does. It just kind of breaks it down a little bit more. I mean, this this shows you the level, so it tells you two stars for Team Store and your maintenance, right? But if you go to Happiness, it'll say, okay, how happy are your fans with your Team Store? Um, are your prices reasonable? So the other nice thing is that it automatically, once again, tells you your contributors and your impact. So how well the location is being maintained, how closely prices match fan expectations, the upgrade level for the location, and then the impacts feeds into overall fan happiness, uh, quantity and tone of fan feedback on prices, and happier fans are likely to spend more. So our team happiness uh, for our fans is 100 right now, so that means people are happy, they're buying stuff. If it goes below that, it could turn into a yellow or a red, which means that people are not happy whatsoever. Um, and the other thing it might tell you if it's under construction is you can see it's a yellow and black kind of striped line there. Player morale tab is like really fast and easy. It tells you your team chemistry and your team morale. Um, so on the team chemistry, it shows your locker room leaders and your non-leaders. On the team morale, it shows your high morale and your low morale players. Pretty straightforward. Uh, if you want to go to the morale, you just hit X and it'll bring you right into your morale window. So it's kind of nice because they've added a bunch of different ways to get to where you need to be and uh, you don't have to actually scroll all the way and then go through a menu to get to another menu. You can just quickly do it from the main menu. So the franchise overview tab basically is a nice quick way to get into stuff that you need to, just like the side tab where it gives you your advanced date, your edit lines, and your player morale, and all the other stuff that pops up along the side. The other neat thing that is if you go into your calendar, the overview is still accessible there. There hasn't been the addition of stats yet, which is kind of unfortunate. Hopefully we get there. Uh, because that used to be huge on the calendar, but uh, you can still access your tab and it gives you everything that you need to know. Um, I had suggested maybe just putting the stats tab in here, and then that way you could access it really fast if you needed to. And it would show your top players and whatnot. Um, the other one was I showed it that it could be kind of in the bottom right corner. You could shrink up your, your uh, logos and stuff. But uh, we haven't gotten it yet, so that's not a big deal for right now. But uh, let's get back into the owner tab. All right, so we're back at the owner tile here and uh, we'll go through these things really fast. So owners and relocation. So owner goals are gonna pop up right at the start of the season if you don't go through this tab. Um, so it shows you my owner goals. I want us to earn 78% uh, of my 30.9 million expected pro profit. And it gives you your expected date of September 12th, 2017. So you have primary goals, secondary goals, and stretch goals. So that's our current primary goal. 
Secondary goal is I want us to beat our rival the Toronto Maple Leafs in our first meeting, and I want I would like us to sell 95% of available ticket sales this season tickets this year. And then those also have your evaluation dates. Um, and then there's also a stretch goal, which is kind of like your long-term goal for the year, which is like it's pretty easy most of the time. Like this one says, we need more parking for the arena. Upgrade the parking lot by one level. So that's like super easy to do. Takes two seconds. Um, the other thing, it shows you your owner happiness in kind of a graph. So if he's happy, the bar will be up. If he's not, it'll go down. The next thing to note on here is the state of the team. So it says hopeful. As a playoff hopeful, I fully expect us to compete for a playoff stop spot. However, if we don't make the playoffs, we need to ensure our fans are, the, are happy with the direction of the team. So what this means is, he's not expecting you to make the playoffs, however he wants your fans to be happy, so we want to still try and do well, we want to make sure that they're buying merchandise and that ticket sales are good. Um, there's also things like rebuilders, playoff contender, Stanley Cup contender, that kind of stuff in there, um, which kind of raises the bar on your expectations. Inside the owner goals and relocation, you also have a proposed relocation tile, and if you want to click that, it's going to tell you that Either you're rejected or yes, you're going through. Um, I think it would be foolish to re relocate when the team's prestige level is so admirable. I'm not open to it at this time. So if our team's uh, prestige was a lot lower, we might be able to relocate to Detroit Red Wings, but because it's such a hardcore fan base, we're one of the original six teams, it's probably never gonna happen. In the intro menu, if we would have said yes, except relocation every time, then this would have been in green, it would have said hi. Now, if our relocation was actually accepted by the owner, as I can show by in our Arizona franchise, you'll notice that the tile underneath relocation now says relocation overview. Um, if you go to that, it'll actually let you select one of 19 cities to relocate to. Now, some of these cities say you can negotiate with and some say you cannot. So if you cannot negotiate with that city, you won't be able to relocate to that city. Um, once you have found a city that seems that you can relocate to, you will go into the city negotiation. So you negotiate city stadium funding, lease duration, concessions revenue sharing, game day ticket revenue sharing, merchandise revenue sharing, and parking revenue sharing. So basically the city wants to know how much money they're putting into your stadium and how much they're gonna get back in return over uh, time with the revenue share. Once you've negotiated and gone back and forth through submitting proposals, uh, you can hit submit proposal and once it's accepted, you can now complete the deal, back out of the deal, or request time to think. I think if you're wanting to relocate though, automatically you'll say, okay, I'll complete the deal. And when you've done that, it will now take you into the all new creation zone, where it gives you the cost of the arena, and you can do all your logos and branding, your team uniforms, your arena, and all the different details that you need for your franchise in the new arena. All right, next up on the owner tiles, you got arena and facilities. So a lot of these things you can get to through the quick overview menu. Um, so the first one is upgrade and maintain, which we already kind of looked at. It's just how you upgrade and you maintain your facilities. Uh, one of the things is if we wanted to purchase the parking lot, for instance. If you wanted to purchase a parking lot, for example, um, if you don't have one, so it tells you what kind of level you want to create your parking lot at. It's up to five stars. Um, the other thing is construction days. So the more construction days you take, the less it costs. You can only do certain ones. So this is the lowest is 64 and it costs 0.512 million. Or we can do it for 84 days and it costs 0.424 million. So if you want to stretch it out, you might not be able to use it as fast and you might not get the revenue from it but you can create it in a slower pace to gain more profits in the end. Also inside arena and facilities is your team ranking and sales. So this shows you all the revenue generated over the last seven days. You can also click the start button, at least on PS4, and it brings up your last seven days, your last 30 days, your year to date, and your all time through your GM mode. And it shows you how much revenue you generated. Um, if you click the L2, it's gonna say revenue generated. So that's your total if you wanna go to game tickets. Obviously, we haven't sold any yet because we haven't started. There's concessions, merchandise, and parking. So also in this, there's going to be another one on your right trigger or R2. Um, so it says you like all the different breakdowns for your merchandise. So how many star jerseys we've sold, how many home jerseys, how many t-shirts, sweaters, hoodies, caps, toques, all this kind of stuff. All lots of stuff to look through. And if you, if you really want, you can break down like everything by exactly what you need next up on here is the set prices tile so if you go to that this is how you set all of your prices for game tickets concessions merchandise and parking 
So in here, each one has a recommended price, sold in the last seven days, sold last game, overall trend, fan feedback, league average sold, and capacity. Um, so the biggest thing for especially season tickets is your capacity. My capacity is 2,544, and I want my sold last game to basically match that. I want to make sure that I'm selling out every time. Um, maybe that means lower my price is lower than the recommended price. Maybe it means finding the sweet spot. I don't know. But uh, the big thing to note is you can pretty much drop your prices, uh, I think, down to $30. So it looks like everyone has a uh, minimum. Uh, someone actually had, had asked me, the, so I wanted to look. Uh, so this is $30, that's the minimum. Lower bow is $60. They all seem to have kind of a cap off, so you don't, you can't go to like five bucks. Okay, $90, and I'm assuming this is probably 120 that'd be my guess. I'm not really sure. But anyways, yeah, that's that. Concessions. You got uh, Fountain Pop Healthy Beverage, which is actually supposed to be kind of like your alcoholic beverage, I, I, I'm guessing, because there is none. You can't have that in a video game, I guess. You got your popcorn, your large popcorn bottle of water, french fries, hot dogs, burger, coffee, pizza slice, mixed nuts, pretzels, and juice. If you upgrade your concessions through the upgrade tab, you actually gain more concessions that you can sell. There's stuff like poutines, there's different sizes of things. Um, there's like large coffee, large juice, there's... Yeah, like I said, poutine. I don't even know. I haven't done a whole bunch, but there is a lot more that you can unlock. Same with the merchandise. So right now we have uh, kids jerseys. You're going to have your superstar jerseys, which would technically, I guess, have numbers on them and names. Um, and then your regular ones, which would be the adult ones. Home jersey for kids, away jersey for kids, home jersey. T-shirts, yada, 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 yada. Um, if you upgrade your store, if you upgrade your team store, it actually gives you access to more things like more hoodies, uh, like different things like hats, toques, all that kind of stuff. So the more you upgrade your store, the more uh, variety you have basically to sell to your fans. The last one here is your regular parking or valet parking. Um, same thing, you got all your prices and stuff. You kind of want to find a sweet spot for parking because uh, you want to fill up that capacity. As you can see, it says 1,000 capacity and sold in the last game, we want that to be 1,000. All right, so that's pretty much it for your set prices. Uh, arena customization is there. I think it's there for every NHL team, but I don't think it's actually accessible uh, due to licensing. So as far as I know, uh, the arena customization only works if you relocate and you have like a uh, customized arena, which would be things like adding jumbotrons and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that is your arena facilities tab. Alright, next up in the owner tab we have our budgets. So most of these things tie together. Um, so I'm going to go, we're going to start with the operations budget first because it kind of makes more sense. The operations budget gives you a breakdown of everything from player salaries, arena operations, promotions, and advertising. Uh, it shows your, your available funds on the right so you can use more or less if I scroll left or right, depending on what I want to put more into. Um, there's also a min and a max. So for example, um, your arena operations, if I wanted to drop it right down, it shows you how much you've spent as well. Um, that puts more into my available funds, which I can put into advertising if I wanted to. Uh, the other thing also breaks down and uh, affects everything else. So arena operations is your upgrades. If I if I put it right to the minimum, if I were to spend all of my arena upgrades, I would not have any more money. Uh, if I wanted to take some from the advertising tab and put it back into the arena operations, it would give me more money to do upgrades and fixes on my stuff. Promotions have to do with all your giveaways on game nights. Uh, so this would include hats, t-shirts, I think there's scarves, I think there's pucks, that kind of stuff. Um, so once you've used kind of all of them up for the year, like say you do four or five, you might have an extra bit of money, so you might be able to take some out of the promotions and put it into something else if you wanted to spend. Uh, the other thing to note on here is the player salaries. There is a target goal for you. So currently our target is 70.930 million, and what we've at right now is allocated 71.552 million dollars. So we're pretty close to what our goal is, and that's what our uh, owner wants to see. Uh, if you hit triangle, you can also auto assign it and it uses up all the funds. Alright, so the one thing that ties into this operations budget as well is the marketing budget. If we click on that, it gives you a circle graph and it shows you how much money you've allocated into your budget. And this is basically all your marketing. So general advertising is merchandise sales and local popularity. Game ticket advertising pretty straightforward and season ticket ad advertising pretty straightforward. Later on in the year, uh, at the start of the off season kind of basically, uh, towards the end of the year, um, you're going to have a season ticket drive. So at that point, you're going to want to take away from game tickets because you're not selling any. 
and you want to throw it all into season ticket advertising basically your ad your general advertising can stay the same because people are still gonna buy your products and you're still gonna have popularity due to that um, but that's what I've noticed so far just for a tip um, during the season though you might want to drop that to up your season ticket advertising or even your general advertising so this this is a kind of a tab that you want to kind of fool around with during the year to find a good spot uh, before you need to do certain things um, so I would say focus on game ticket and general advertising during the year and then at the end of the year if you don't make the playoffs or whatever put it all into season ticket advertising for the next year last up in the budgets tab is the balance sheet so in here it shows you year to date last 30 last seven days it gives you your total profit and your revenue and expenses so since we haven't done anything our concessions parking merchandise game tickets all have zero dollars but our tickets season ticket sales are 68.128 million dollars uh, expenses have everything from advertising to parking revenue uh, to stadium lease costs um, to parking staff salaries all kinds of stuff in there um, so this stuff updates on a game to game basis basically on a week to week basis and whatnot um, but it's a good way to keep track of how you're doing but it lets you keep track of everything for your uh, profits which is great to know for your owner because more profits make a happy owner the last tile here on the owner is the uh, promotions so this also pops up at the start of the year uh, so promotion nights are only home games I, I made this mistake as well at the first uh, time I saw it because I was like where's all the other games but because there is no uh, you can't really do promotions at other people's arenas it makes no sense absolutely at all um, so it just shows you all your home games so if I want to do something on our home opener against the Ottawa Senators, I would click on that and there's different promotions. We've got the Dylan Larkin bobblehead, uh, Gustav Nyquist bobblehead, Tatar bobblehead, t-shirt, hat giveaway, scarf, and puck giveaway. Um, basically you can go through and set these for all the year and uh, if you look at the right side it says the spent amount and your budget remaining. So like I said, if you use up all your budget, you can't really allocate that budget uh, to anywhere else. But if you don't spend your full budget, you can actually go back and allocate it to somewhere else, which is great because uh, it gives you more money for other things like uh, promotions or upgrades or anything you want to do. All right, so I just simmed a day in the season. I haven't done that yet. Um, but as you can see right away, it pops up with your owner expectations. If I click on that, it shows you your owner goals. If we back out, it'll do that. We're just going to sim through a few days. So there's our cap. As we continue, it'll say amateur scout. Okay, we want to do that. You can edit your scouting. But then after that, it says your budget allocation. So this is the tab we already went through. If we clicked in here, it would show us how much available funds and where we want to assign them. And if we back out again, you're going to have your promotions pop up. So we already showed you guys that as well. Set promotion nights. So if you wanted to do that, we could go through. We can set all these. Go like, okay, we'll give away pucks here. Um, okay, against Dallas, we'll give away uh, Dylan Larkin bobblehead. Uh, yeah, let's go around the first game back. At the arena in the new uh, the new year, we'll give away T-shirts, and then uh, let's let's go against the Maple Leafs here. Our home game against the Maple Leafs, we give away hats for them. Um, and then we'll say, you know what, screw it, let's give it on the uh, the last day here. Oh, we don't have any money. Okay, we can't. So as you can see, we still have uh, 0.058 million budget remaining, so we can go back and assign that to a different area. And we're gonna save this, save and exit, that's fine. All right, so the other new thing I wanted to show you guys was the player morale update. So if we go to our team meeting, um, instead of just giving you the uh, different, uh, basically your actions, it tells you what the actions are. So assertive, calming, demanding, and motivating. Uh, so these all affect players differently. It happens exactly the same in uh, the player interactions, just the one-on-one -on -one interactions. So different players react differently. I think they've changed it up a little bit too. Um, so for example, I can't just hit calming, which is the second one that used to work for everything and give you no negative feedback. For the most part, it would either be uh, positive or it would be neutral, so you wouldn't get any negative feedback. But now if we do this, as you can see, we get negative feedback. So the morale has been changed a little bit, so that's something to keep a lookout for. And uh, the other thing is that each player reacts differently. So um, not all the young guys always keep the calming as the best one. You might need to be assertive or you might need to be motivating to get players morale up and for it to have a direct result. All right, so that was a quick overview on franchise mode and how it works. Last thing to note, there has been a patch which added seven new relocations. Uh, the retired player list is back as well as a bunch of new owner goals and such to work on.
Um, the other thing that I wanted to note is there is a draft lottery screen. Um, it doesn't act, it's not like an animation or anything, but it shows you uh, basically the order of the draft lottery. So you can look at stats before that date. And then when they do the draft lottery, you can see if you moved up or down. It isn't super detailed, but it's still there, which is kind of nice before you just kind of had to guess and be like, oh, maybe I won the draft lottery, I'm not sure. But it is there now, which is great. Um, currently, there's still no retired players. Um, again, I don't know what they're adding in the patch, so we might see some new stuff that we haven't seen yet, or that we've seen before but haven't been added. Yeah, the only other thing I didn't show you guys was a season ticket drive, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, you want to allocate your budget into season ticket sales instead. And uh, yeah, that kind of sets you up for the next year. All the off-season stuff, as far as I know, is the same. All the all the potentials are pretty much the same for the rookies, as far as I know. They might have been updated a bit to work a little bit better. But yeah, I think most of the off-season stuff is pretty much the same. But the budgets and all the other stuff and the owner goals, it adds way, way more uh, depth if you guys are into that kind of stuff. Uh, kind of like a roller coaster tycoon type uh, things going on. It makes it super deep. If you don't want to do it, like I said, at the very start, you can turn it off. But uh, otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you haven't done so, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Hello out there. We're on the air. It's hockey night tonight. Tension grows, the whistle blows, and the puck goes down the ice. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. And the best game you can name is the good old hockey game.